One time a colleague said to me, Lori, you are brilliant. I said, nah, that's just the team that makes me seem that way. She said, no, 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 don't do that. You just push the compliment away onto somebody else. Hear me, you are brilliant. Now take it, absorb it into your being and believe it. I was like, dang girl, you are right. And we do that often. We push the credit onto someone else, but there is tremendous power in keeping it for ourselves and letting it steep into our soul. What happened in that moment was something that we all need more of. My girl was lifting me up. Welcome to Hoop Earrings Conversations. I'm your host, Lori Vasquez Scolari. In today's episode, I will share why we need to uplift women in the workplace and in society and some tips for how to do it. This video is not just for women, men listen up and everybody get your hoops on. So how can we uplift each other? Tip one, we need to acknowledge our own biases and admit that we judge other women. We do it sometimes whether we realize it or not, but being aware of it is the first step. Have you ever been a teeny bit jealous of another woman because deep down inside, you know she is impressive? I got a story on this one. Many jobs ago, I was called in by human resources about something that I did and I was like, I had no idea what it was. I got there and one of my fellow colleagues was in the room and the human resources person said, you were called here because of the way that you treat your colleague here. I was like, what are you talking about, Willis? Anyway, my colleague went on to tell me that I walk around the office like a snob, <laughs> busily doing my work, not, not acknowledging her presence, and I had no idea I was doing this, so I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I totally apologize, and I said, this stops immediately, and so after that, I came into the office every day extra sensitive to saying hello to her, and just being mindful of acting more humble, and I was like, all right, lesson learned. But actually, fast forward many years later, and several jobs later, I ran into the same colleague un unexpectedly, and she ran up to me, and she was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I ran into you. I owe you a huge apology. And she said, I was super jealous of you because of your accomplishments. They were above mine, and I'm sorry that I called human resources on you. And it took me years to realize that it was my own self-esteem that was the actual issue, and I really should have supported and admired you, especially as a fellow Latina. I was like, what? I did not expect that. So we hugged and we agreed that we would support other women, but especially women of color moving forward. Okay, so why am I calling out women of color specifically here? Because we have a bit more obstacles than our white women counterparts. So Latinas get paid 26% less than white women according to the US Census Bureau. And there are a lot of other data points to share on this disparity between women of color and their white women counterparts, but I'd be here all day. So let's keep it moving. Bottom line is this, women, but especially women of color, deserve a lot more support in the workplace. Okay, so let's talk about the part where my colleague told me I needed to be more humble. It implies that women should be submissive and less assertive, while men are, sometimes it's unsaid, but they're encouraged to be confident and self-assured. And this double standard can be demeaning and restrict a woman's ability to express herself fully. And that's basically what I did. I remember thinking, okay, I need to keep my head down, act a bit more, you know, humble in the office, try not to act so sassy and so bossy and so confident. So the irony here is that it came from another woman. So again, we do it to each other. Okay, so how do we get this way? Well, it ain't our fault. It's because of this little thing called the patriarchy. <laughs> Men, stay with me. Let's review what patriarchy means and how it affects all of us. Patriarchy is a social system in which we currently live where men hold the majority of power and authority and women are often marginalized or disadvantaged. And it's a system that has been present in most societies throughout history and can affect various aspects of life such as work, politics, economics, and family dynamics. And patriarchy can manifest in different ways, but I want to just share a few points to remind us that it exists. So according to the World Economic Forum, as of 2021, women held only 27% of managerial positions globally. And then in political leadership, women hold only 25% of seats worldwide. And according to data from the World Bank, 
globally, women earn 77 cents for every dollar earned by men. And then according to the International Labor Organization, globally, women spend about three times more hours than men on household and family chores. Surprise, surprise. You know, that important stuff like child care, elder care, cooking, cleaning, etc. This is an important point because this limits women's time for career and economic opportunities. It's all connected. So if you want to bring down the patriarchy and make our society more just, Support your homegirls more than ever. Tip two, women. Let's do this. Let's remember our power to remind us how amazing we are. Let's ground ourselves in a few stories of some powerful women who stood against the patriarchy. Many of them are largely forgotten. Here's a story. In 1910, a brigade of 400 women called the Adelitas fought in the Mexican Revolution against the Spanish. And at that time, they had no rights. They could not vote. They were not considered citizens. And though they fought and died alongside men, their male male soldiers often treated them as sex objects. So despite their years of service, when the war ended, they were expected to go back into their designated pre-revolution roles, such as caregivers, and homemakers for their men. And I often think of these women because they may very well be my own ancestors, but because they were not recognized or respected by the male-dominated society, their stories often forgotten. And there are other, of course, well-known female warriors such as Harriet Tubman and Joan of Arc, and these women were literally banished and hunted down because they stood against the system and stepped outside of their gender norm. So this is what I personally do to remember my power as a woman. I watch documentaries about women like the ones that I just mentioned just to feel inspired and grounded and remember who I am. And no, you don't have to fight in a war, but if you want to remember your power in an everyday kind of way, remember this simple fact. Women have the power to give birth. The Navajo, Hopi, and Maori indigenous cultures know this, and they emphasize the sacredness of women's role in childbirth and motherhood. And these cultures revere women as caregivers of life, and they know that they play a crucial role in the preservation of their people and all people. So everybody, shoulders back, chin up, remember who you are, ladies, stand in your power. Men, encourage your wives and daughters and mothers to do the same. Tip three, Release your feelings of self-doubt and be proactive about boosting your self-confidence as much as you can. If you have self-doubt, this is totally normal. Women's voices and opinions have been historically devalued and marginalized within patriarchal systems. This can result in self-doubt, a lack of self-confidence in expressing yourself and a feeling of not being heard or taken seriously. Dove, the soap company, conducted a study and found that only 20% of women globally feel confident. 20%. These thoughts of low self-worth were put into our minds by, guess what, society. Okay, so what do we do about this? We need to release these thoughts of self-doubt. If we keep them, we give them power and we give the patriarchy power. I personally have dealt with this by listening to a guided meditation about boosting my self-worth as a woman. Link below. So you want to feel extra empowered? Watch Ariana Grande's God is a Woman video. In the song, Ariana Grande says it best. When you try to come for me, I keep on flourishing. You go, girl. Tip number four, embrace your feminine energy. Feminine energy is a set of qualities and characteristics traditionally associated with femininity, and it's not limited to gender and can be embraced by anybody, but any individual of any gender. Um, And feminine energy is often described as intuitive, nurturing, compassionate, receptive, empathetic, creative, and collaborative. Especially in the workplace, women energy is often squashed, yet it is very powerful. Emotions, motherly instinct, humanity, and intuition. That is our secret sauce as women. So you can help by encouraging us to embody those aspects instead of suppressing them. And if you are of another gender or non-gender conforming, consider embracing within yourself as well. Men are often discouraged from crying, for example, because they can be influenced by societal norms and expectations around masculinity. However, let it out, people, because crying actually is good for you. It reduces stress, it boosts your mood, 
and allows for emotional release and healing. So join us and encourage us to be in our feminine energy. All right, tip five, embrace new norms in beauty. The game has dictated our beauty standards and the patriarchal society often promotes narrow and unrealistic beauty standards, leading women to feel pressured to conform to these ideals. And this can result in body dissatisfaction, low self-esteem, and a negative body image. And when you're feeling these, it affects you at work, it affects you at school, and basically everything in life. So what if we were to redefine it? Here's an idea. What if we made self-confidence the new beauty standard? So I personally, whenever I see like a little girl, instead of saying, oh, you're so pretty, I make it a point to say, you are so smart or you are so confident as to not place beauty standards into their little head so early on. So everybody embrace your curves or no curves, embrace your own flavor of fashion and be bold and whatever you want. Compliment self-confidence often. And one of my favorite quotes is this one. For attractive lips, speak words of kindness. For lovely eyes, seek out the good in people. The beauty of a woman is not in the clothes she wears, the figure she carries, or the way that she combs her hair. The beauty of a woman must be seen from her eyes because that is the doorway to her heart, the place where love resides. Beautiful. Tip six. This is the most powerful one. Fall deeply in love with yourself. When you do this, it affects everything in your life. Let's talk about your self-concept. What is this? It's the perception of yourself. It encompasses your beliefs, thoughts, feelings about your identity, your capabilities, your values, and your worth. So fall in love with who you are. But how do you do this? One way to do this is practice self-reflection. Take time to reflect to gain a deeper understanding of who you really are. I like to journal. It helps me explore my thoughts, emotions, values, and basically what I want out of life. So ask yourself this question. Are all the aspects of my life truly authentically me at my core? Am I in love with myself? All the parts of me? Embrace the good parts and reflect on any aspects you'd like to change. And then maybe make yourself a plan to make more choices that are more aligned with your authentic self then you will grow to truly love yourself, but it takes time. Okay, let's summarize. Tip one, acknowledge our biases in how we judge other women and let's change our behavior. Tip two, women, let's remember our power and stand in it. Tip three, release your feelings of self-doubt and be proactive about boosting your self-confidence. Tip four, embrace your feminine energy. Tip five, Redefine norms and beauty. Six, fall deeply in love with yourself. Let's reclaim our power by recognizing our inherent worth and value. We can actively engage in creating positive change by speaking up, advocating for gender equality, and challenging systemic biases and injustices. As the famous historian James Brown once said, this is a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing, nothing without a woman or a girl. Better recognize Mr. Brown. So ladies, let's get those hoops on and let's start uplifting each other. Men, send this video to your daughters, your sisters, female friends, and mothers. I'm your host, Lori vasquez Scolari, and remember, real queens fix each other's crowns. So now, look up, imagine me fixing your crown on top of your head. All right, queen, let's crush this life together.